Hi everyone and welcome back to Something to Talk About. Hi all. We're so excited that you're joining us. Every Thursday, 3 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. We have some really good stories for you this week. Yeah, so we, um, we're going to tell you about a super secret celebrity wedding that happened over yes. the past week. Um, another country stars, we see a little bit of like the inner workings of another country stars marriage of over 50 years. Mm -hmm. She shares a little bit about that. So we've got that. Um, and we've also got just a lot of good coverage on Southern food. That's what yeah. I'm going to call it. It's going to be our Southern food desk. I like that. Um, so, but before we get started, remember to subscribe to Southern Living's YouTube channel so you never miss us yes. um, on a week, on every Thursday. And then you also will get notifications for all of our other great shows on this channel. Yes. Click the bell too. And then you'll just get that little notification like, oh, Jory yep. and Meg are about to get live. You won't have to remember yourself. It'll remind you. So yes. I love a good reminder. All right, Jory, kick us off. Our first story this week, you guys, about my personal favorite grocery chain. Trader Joe's. Um, it's a good one. I do love Publix. And I know you guys love Publix, but Trader Joe's is my favorite. I think it's because I lived in New York for a little while. I am a Southern girl, but I did live in New York for a little while. And that's where I shopped when I was in New York. And now Birmingham has a Trader mm -hmm. Joe's. So that's where we, we're based here in Birmingham. Yeah. So I'm an avid Trader Joe's shopper. So this is actually the list of the top Trader Joe's item based on every state. We're going to bring you the Southern states, of course, because that's what we care about. I um, love these. I love these little infographics. Yes, I know. They're so interesting. I'm mm -hmm. like, it, it gives me a glimpse into the state. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so there is actually four items that kept repeating themselves throughout the southern states. Okay. Um, we have sweet chili sauce. That's good. Which is my home state of Louisiana. That was the number one. And these are the number one based on what you guys search for, for most on Google, okay. which is interesting. So, so what folks in Louisiana are like, can I get for. this at Trader Joe's yes. and Alabama and North mm -hmm. Carolina and all that? Okay. Yes. Um, Kung Pao Chicken was also one of the top ones, mm. which I found interesting. Not necessarily a southern dish, but I well, have Trader had Trader Joe's has such great so freezer good. food. I was about to oh say my that. gosh. Listen, I don't cook that often, so freezer food saves me and Trader Joe's. so again. good. Um, number three, everything but the bagel seasoning. Do you know this? What? You haven't heard of this, Meg. Oh my gosh. It is, so you know an everything bagel, right? Uh -huh. It is seasoning that would go on an everything bagel, but just the seasoning and a little seasoning. And you can put that on toast. You can season your chicken with it, everything. I mean, mm -hmm. it is, so it's like some poppy seeds. It's mm -hmm. got the garlic. It's got the black seeds in it. Um, it is fantastic. I love that. That stays in my cupboard constantly. That's so interesting. That's a Southern thing. Yeah. Is that what y'all are looking for at Trader Joe's? I know. None of these are, are like particularly me. like Southern dishes. Yeah. Like maybe the sweet chili sauce I could see like being kind of Southern, mm -hmm. but the other ones, not really. Yeah. So those, the only one that was different. So all the Southern states, it was one of those four. The only one that was different was Arkansas and they were coming in hot with the macarons. Which <laughs> I know. That's also I nice. Know. I know. They're, it, these, this, this is Arkansas shocking. Arkansas is fancy. I know. Arkansas. Look at their, their pinkies up. <laughs> the little macarons yeah. at Trader Joe's. I know. Ooh. I know. <laughs> um, but I have had the sweet chili sauce, and I was actually looking for pepper jelly, mm -hmm. which is you know, super Southern. Um, so good. I went in to Trader Joe's asking for pepper jelly. They were like, we don't have pepper jelly. We're sorry, ma'am. But try this sweet chili sauce. We think it's, you'll like it. It's similar. And it was amazing. They actually gave it, it to me similar. for free. Oh, wow. Yeah. What? He was just like, here, you can try it. Like, they're so nice. They're so nice. But anyway, yeah, that is, that's the top four coming across the Southern states. So y'all tell us why y'all are looking for that at Trader yeah, really. Joe's. I'm, is it we because have like, you know, you, you can get the like good southern food, like either you're making it yourself or you're getting it at Publix right. or Kroger or whatever. And when you go to Trader Joe's, it's you like, oh, let's get exotic and get some macarons. That is or... actually, that's a good thought. I bet that's why it is. Yeah, I'm so, curious. Yeah, what let is, us know. What is your, when you go into Trader Joe's, what is your go-to? Uh, what do you have to get? This is shameful, but it is the garlic fries. Have you ever had these garlic fries? No, frozen. Yo, I'm like, I'm, you gotta I'm, go I feel like I'm in Trader Joe's 101 here. <laughs> like, I need to be taking notes. Garlic fries, they're just frozen, um, and they come with this frozen garlic sauce, uh -huh. butter sauce. You just pop them in the oven on a little tray. Once they're done, you sprinkle that sauce on top, and they are they are fire. Mm. So good. Yep, that's okay, I'll have to remember that. Yeah. Well, I love their flowers. I feel like every time I go in the one That's, here in Birmingham, yeah. their flowers are so beautiful the orchids all sit and outside. they're priced so well. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing I love, which I actually don't go in looking for, 
so I do this thing when I really love something, I go all in and I eat so much it makes me sick and then I don't want it anymore. Classic. <laughs> so I did that with Trader Joe's pork buns. Uh -huh. And they're in the freezer section and they're so easy. You just like pop one out, you put it in the microwave, you put like a wet paper towel over it so it stays like nice and moist. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it tastes like you, you just got it at a legit restaurant. Meg, I have not had these pork buns. Get them, they are so good. <laughs> I used to bring them to work, and I would like pop a couple in the microwave, and that would be lunch, and they were so good. I'm heading there straight after work today. <laughs> that's that's my afternoon plan, get the pork buns. So that's what I've been Googling from yeah. Alabama for yeah. Trader Joe's. Yeah, you know, Alabama was a sweet chili sauce, so I know. Mm. It's, it could be good on the pork buns. Yeah, that's a thought. That's a thought. <laughs> anyway, yep, that's that's a Trader Joe's roundup for you. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna bring the the food condiments back down south. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know y'all are going for these things from for the south, but th this is truly southern. Mm -hmm. Golden Eagle syrup. Have you had Golden Eagle syrup? I have. Yes, I have. But only after I moved to Alabama. Mm -hmm. So it's you know I don't think I had had it until I got here to Alabama, and you know I saw it on the shelf at Piggly Wiggly, my neighborhood Piggly Wiggly, one day, and I I was needing to get some syrup because I was making biscuits and things. Like oh. Let's try this. Yeah. So I didn't know the history of Golden Eagle syrup, and I actually hadn't stopped to think about it until we did a story this week, mm -hmm. kind of exploring the history of Golden Eagle, and it's really interesting. So it is made in this, the tiny town of Fayette, Alabama, and it has been in Fayette for 90 years. Wow. Um, so this all started 1928. A man named Victor Patterson invented the Golden Eagle syrup in his backyard. It only has four ingredients, cane sugar, corn syrup, molasses, and honey. That's it. And it's like pe pecan pie bakers love it. It's mm -hmm. great in pecan pies, all that. So he and his wife decided that they would take their little backyard venture and turn it into a legitimate business. And they uh, opened a manufacturing building in Fayette's downtown, and that is where Golden Syrup, Golden Eagle remains. They still manufacture right out of that building, and they still use the same four ingredients. They haven't changed their recipe since then. Um, and one of so it's not owned by the Patterson family anymore. It's owned by Temple Bowling and John Blevins. Their families they bought it back in 2011, but. Um, Temple Bowling said that they haven't changed the recipe because it's all pure sugars and there's no expiration on pure sugar. Oh, that's cool. I never stopped to think about, but, but makes sense. Yeah. So, and this is what was most fascinating to me because I feel like, you know, as times change, technology gets better and so things are manufactured differently. Mm -hmm. Every jar of Golden Eagle syrup is still hand tightened in the factory. That is wild. That makes so, me like want to go out and buy a jar, you know. I know. Like, locally sourced, you know. Well, and the two families that bought this company back in 2011 said the reason why they bought it is because they didn't want it to get gobbled up by some big company. They wanted it to remain a small Alabama company, mm -hmm. and so they felt like, okay, it's up for sale. We're going to take it so we can, you know, keep this a, a small Alabama thing. And the, where it got its name, they said the inventor, Mr. Patterson used to say that there was no equal to the syrup. So he named it Golden Eagle because no bird flies higher than the eagle and golden for the color of the syrup. I love that. Mm -hmm. If you never had it, comparative to like your normal syrup, so you would pick up at the grocery store, your ancient mamas, your mm -hmm. log cabin, all of that yeah. stuff, it tastes a lot more honey-based in my yes. opinion. Yes, yeah. Like you're getting like a mixture mm -hmm. of honey and syrup. You can taste the honey. Yeah. And I think it's like, it's much better with, I know a lot of people use it for pies and stuff, but I think it's much better with biscuits mm -hmm. than just like your basic maple syrup. Because, well, because honey is so good Because honey's biscuits. good on biscuits, So you're yeah. getting, you're getting both. But yeah. Um, yeah, golden eagle syrup. Maybe, I don't know if any of you are, are Southern Mississippi fans or mm -hmm. alumni, but you know, they're the golden eagles. Oh. It's supposed to be perfect to your like Golden Eagle tailgate. That's actually <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, that's a great idea. You're probably giving someone a tailgate idea for yeah. next season. Pull this out yeah. on your, at your tailgate in Hattiesburg, y'all. Yeah, Golden Eagle themed tailgate. Mm -hmm. I love that. Y'all, next up, we're bringing you one of our favorite Southern celebrity, celebrities, Miss Dolly Parton. She's awesome. We love her. Mm -hmm. But it turns out, this is super interesting, her husband, Carl Thomas Dean, who they're about to celebrate this coming year, their 53rd wedding anniversary. Aww. And it's surprising because they, he really stays out of the spotlight. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot about Dolly, but a lot of people don't even realize she's married because 
he's just completely out of the spotlight. They don't talk about, yeah. um, you, you know. You know, I tried to Google him actually mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, and it's hard to even find photos of him. Yeah, they're like super private, which I like. I respect yeah. that in this, you know, mm -hmm. with all these celebrities spilling their guts Probably wondering everything. why they've kept their marriage so successful. Probably. Um, but it turns out he is actually not a big fan of Dolly's music. Gasp. Cut, clutching my pearls. <laughs> that is crazy to me. But he's not. He actually prefers rock music like Led Zeppelin. Um, yeah. And so wow. she said in a recent interview with Good Morning Britain um, that he likes hard rock, Led Zeppelin, and he's not necessarily one of the biggest fans of her music. So he supports her and loves mm -hmm. her, of course, but he would. she said he would never just throw on a Dolly Parton album when they're hanging out at their house, which, yeah. you know, to me is hilarious. I, I think. think it's also so telling of Dolly. Like, she strikes me as someone who is just, like, so independent, mm -hmm. her woman, like, very authentic to who she yeah. is. And, and just she, confident. She and doesn't confident. need her husband yeah, to like, like her she, music. She didn't, she didn't become a country star to, like, get men to like her, yeah. her husband to like her more and like if her husband doesn't like her music she's okay with it she's still gonna be doing the music the way she wants to yeah. do it she's not trying to impress some man and i love that yeah um i guess opposites do attract you know because yeah. he's a rock person she likes country and they're mm -hmm. happily married so he'll be listening to stairway to heaven over nine to five Every single day. I just think that it's a sh super short story, but I found it really interesting. That is. You know? I love it. Anytime I can get like a little glimpse of like Dolly's Dolly. Yeah, yeah. Behind. Yeah. I just, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. She's just, yeah. And it's she's, cool that she's open about it too. She's mm -hmm. not trying to hide the fact that he's not the biggest fan. Yeah. I, like again, like she just seems so authentic and just very true to who she is mm -hmm. and and she is very country, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not it's not this new age pop country. Right. It is very old school country. So I get that it's not everyone's cup of tea, but you can believe that I'm jamming out to Dolly on most mornings. She's on good. my way to work. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right. Well, we we have some more big news. Oh yes, <laughs> big news. Eating carbs could help you live longer. This is according to science. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming to you from the our big science. Science. <laughs> These science. Yeah. Okay, so y'all, that means biscuits and grits and sweet potatoes and hush puppies and cornbread and macaroni and cheese and the rice and red beans and rice and the dumpling dumplings and chicken and dumplings. And Man, uh, I could just keep going. But all of that, we're gonna live forever. That's great, yeah. Especially people below the Mason Dixon. We're just gonna live forever because we yeah, live yeah. off carbs down yes. here. And I haven't even covered desserts yet. Yes. Oh gosh. Okay, so here's the actual science behind this. All right, aging scientists, that's a thing, and we're very appreciative of them, people that look at how we age, why we age, and how to stop it. Mm -hmm. They are looking at the long lifespan of the folks that live on Japan's Okinawa Islands. So the residents there tend to live longer than average human beings. Out of every 100,000 people that live in the Okinawans, 68 live to 100 years or more. So that is over three times the amount of Americans. And like, if you took 100,000 Americans, 60, I mean, not even a third of those is getting mm -hmm. to over 100 years. And even by the standards of Japan, which, like, Japan has, like, one of the longest lifespans in the world, the folks that live on these Japanese islands live longer than even wow, the folks crazy. on the mainland. They actually have a 40% greater chance of living to 100 than any of the other folks in Japan. Wow. So... Scientists have actually been studying these islands since 1975, so they've got a good bit of research behind them. This isn't just some new hunch they threw out there. They've actually been looking at this for decades. And they have found that Okinawans manage to delay, they not only live longer, but they delay the usual effects of aging. So like wrinkles, that sort of thing? Like, yeah, and probably like creaky bones right. and all, <laughs> all that, that stuff. stuff. I'm already gray experiencing hair. my third, gray hair, yeah. <laughs> Two-thirds of Okinawans live independently until the age of 97. Wow. That's crazy. And they're saying this has something to do with what you eat? The secret, they think, is in their carb-heavy diet. They have a peculiar... I can't say that word. <laughs> you they have a high that. ratio of <laughs> carbohydrates to protein in their diet, and a lot of their calories come from sweet potatoes. Oh, okay. Probably not sweet potato casserole. No, not how we make but it. But 
is sweet potato. They're still sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. I yes. all the time. Sometimes I worry I'm going to turn into a sweet potato. So this is good news for me. <laughs> they, add, they also eat an abundance of greens and yellow vegetables. Mm -hmm. And we love our collard and green beans mm -hmm. and squash yes. down here. They do eat a little protein. They eat pork, fish, and other meats. But it's typically a very smaller portion of their diet than, say, like a typical American diet. Mm. So... Scientists are now calling it the Okinawan ratio, which is a new diet, I guess. Not really a new diet, but it's what they've named this diet. And it's just about finding the right balance between carbs and proteins. So they're mm -hmm. saying you should eat 10 times the amount of carbs of protein. So 10 times carbs for every one yeah. protein. I'm so bad at math, y'all. I have to really walk myself through it. It's okay. You got there. <laughs> <laughs> and they think that this not only does it help you live longer, because no one wants to live longer if they're just sick all the time, right. but they're saying it'll help you live longer and could ward off a lot of these awful diseases we see here, mm -hmm. cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's. Wow. That is crazy. And I like that it gives me permission to eat my carbs, yeah. you know? Grits for dinner, y'all. Yeah. Yes. Grits for dinner. That's an amazing <laughs> thought. <sighs> you guys. So that's, that's from the science desk. <laughs> Your daily dose of science. Last up, you guys, we have Miss Miranda Lambert. You'll know her. You might love her. I like her music. Love her or hate her? Love her or hate her. She is a country superstar. Yes, yes. She is who she is. Turns out she had a secret ma wedding and announced last week, just after Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that she got married. And no one knew this was happening. You know what she did? She announced it after our show. She did. So we couldn't break the news. We couldn't break it. Sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she did get married. His name is Brendan McLaughlin. Um, she announced this one day after Valentine's Day in honor of Valentine's Day that they got hitched. Um, yeah, she announced it on Instagram. I did a little digging. I'm going to tell you what I know about him because he's not a celebrity. He's mm -hmm. just a normal guy. Um, it was back in August and for an interview that Miranda gave. She said she was happily single. So unless she was fibbing, they had not been together at that point. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I they, like your investigative work here. Yes, they mm -hmm. got married on January 26th. That was when they actually got married. They announced it on February 15th. He is around 28 years old. We don't know for sure. <laughs> she is 35, so he's a, a younger man. Um, and he does, have you heard this, he has a newborn with... That's not Miranda. That's not Miranda. Miranda didn't have a baby, Miranda right? Miranda did not have a baby. He has a newborn, so Miranda's a stepmom now. Yeah, so this is what's happening. I'm going to need a family tree. I know, I know. He is a police officer and um, has dabbled in modeling a little bit. But that's really all we know of him. So he's kind of a mysterious figure. We don't know much, but yeah. So we don't think they were dating in August. We don't, yes. But they got married in January. Mm -hmm. But he also has a newborn. Yep. That is not Miranda's. Yep. So that's what and we know. And didn't I read that he was engaged before? He has been engaged before. Not... To the newborn's mom, right? I don't think so. Oh, this is getting messy. I, I don't know if we need to go further. It's getting good, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Miranda has dated two guys since Blake. Um, mm -hmm. You guys all know Blake and Miranda. They married for four years, dated for two before that. Um, did not work out. A lot of people were really sad about that because they were a cute couple. But mm -hmm. she seems to be really happy. And everyone's kind of happy for her because yeah. she seems to have found her happiness. And um, and Blake seems happy, too, with He does. Gwen. With Gwen. He's still with Gwen, right? He is, yep. So... It looks like it's all working out. She also had a beautiful wedding dress. If you guys want to see it is beautiful. Yeah, more photos of this. There's a couple more. Um, you can check it out on the links below. We're going to mm -hmm. post for you, and you can see the full article about it. But, yeah, um, yeah. it was it seemed to be a private ceremony, and, uh, yeah. So. Well, congratulations, y'all. Congrats to Miranda. And best wishes. Yes, we're going to have to keep yeah. up. So we'll see what happens. I love celebrity weddings. I love celebrity news in general. If yeah, I could, in too. another life, I was like a gossip columnist. Because they're not just like us. They're not. You're <laughs> it's right. It's fun to, to uh, see what that life is like. Yes. Well, lastly, I think Meg has a must-have. I do. My it's, favorite part of the it's show. It's for all you beauty gurus out there, mm -hmm. or if you're like me, a beauty guru wannabe. <laughs> um, I just discovered this makeup brush a few weeks ago. It is by It Cosmetics. It's their superhero 4-in-1 Transforming Super Shadow and Liner Brush. I got it at Ulta. So this is how it works. It's really cool. So one end is like the flat liner brush, 
And then the other end, you can actually turn into three different brushes. So it has this little slide. You can slide it up. You can hear it clicking a few different. So if you go all the way up, this is like a smudge brush because, you know, it's real small and compact. Mm -hmm. You can click it down one and then it turns it into a crease brush and then you can go all the way down to get the full brush out and then it's your all over brush. Um, yeah, all over eyeshadow yeah. brush. And it's really great. So you can do like a whole eye look with one brush and then you only have one brush to clean, yes. one brush to keep up with. Yeah. Um, I was telling Meg before we went live that this is so cool. Mm -hmm. She had just showed me before we went live and I was blown away because I use one brush anyway mm -hmm. um, for everything. It doesn't have, it doesn't look as good because one brush isn't meant to do all those different things you do right. to your eyeshadow. But mm -hmm. this, you can have one brush and it still does all of those different, the yeah. overall look, the, you know, the crease. The under yeah. eye smudge. All Provides you, you can have like a little bit more control over your yeah. shadow when you're putting it on with different things. Um, so yeah, this is just so handy. It's and genius, honestly. And it saves you from going out and buying a whole brush set for who knows how and much. And having to pack that around. That's not yeah. fun. So anyway. But yeah. So for it's low help. maintenance gals, this is mm -hmm. for you. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Any well, weekend plans? Are you going to watch the Oscars? I am. The Academy Awards is my Super Bowl. Um, yes, it comes on this Sunday. I have a friend. I'm going over to her place, and we're going to, you know, put in our ballads. And mm -hmm. I've seen, I have two, every year I have a tradition where I watch all of the movies that are nominated for Best Picture. Okay. Um, I do it every single year. I have two left to watch. So I've watched eight, I believe, and I have two more What to two go. do you have left to watch? Green Book. Okay. And what is the other one? Hold on, it'll come to me. And Roma, which, Roma. Is, on, yeah, okay. which is on Netflix. Have you seen either one of those? I haven't. You know? I don't think I've seen any of the movies up for Best Picture. No, yet. A Star is Born? No. no. The Favorite? No. No, I have been <laughs> so bad. I used to love movies mm -hmm. and going to movies and all that. And I just, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I like my, I, oh. I love, I Netflix binge yeah. for sure. But I, but I love going to TV movies. shows. Yeah. So I don't know. It's like something with like sitting down and committing to a full movie where I like to watch a TV show and be able to leave if you want after yeah. 30 minutes or and an also, hour. I'm just not as artsy as you. Listen, I'm <laughs> like you're a wannabe makeup guru. I'm a wannabe artistic person. I'm not really, but I do love movies. I love, yeah. love, love movies. My favorite is the favorite. So I'm hoping that wins. That does look good. It's a really Because I love good. Emma Stone yeah, and I love it's funny. Rachel, it's Rachel Weisz. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. It's funny and it's pretty and yeah, I think it has everything you want in a movie. But So you guys should check it out. But yes, I do have Oscar plans. What about you? Are you doing anything for the Oscars? Not really. No, Not I mean, yeah, I'll probably watch them because I, lo well, I love the fashion. Yes. I love to watch award shows really for the fashion and the red carpet. And, and the funny moments. And, what. Yeah. 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 But not um, so, you don't care so much about the movies. Not really. I yeah. mean, I, I feel like I always find myself ending up watching the Oscars. And I, I remember the whole big debacle with um, Moonlight, Moonlight versus... and the the other Emma Stone movie. Yes, uh, La La Land. La La Land. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching that. I loved that drama. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Um, but this year, I just really don't know a lot of the movies. But mm -hmm. I do know who all the movie stars are. Yeah, so, so you'll still enjoy it. Yeah. Well, that's that's our show for this week, guys. Yeah, and for all of you uh, Tar Heel fans, congratulations on your big one over Duke last oh, night. Yes. Yeah, that's big deal. But y'all have to, you know, you got to face them again coming up in March. Yep, not over yet. That's one of our favorite rivalries here it at is. Southern Living. So. Yes, UNC versus Duke. That's a big one. Well, you guys have an awesome weekend. Watch the Academy Awards, and we'll catch you next Thursday. And maybe have some updates for you on that, on who won and what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. <laughs>